Hello everybody, it's Dave Neal, stand-up comic and host of Bachelor Nation News. In this video, we've got Katie Thurston telling all on a comedy podcast called Scissor Bros. Real funny stuff here. We've got Stevie Weeby and Jeremiah Watkins, LA-based comedians. I know I know Jeremiah, but not Stevie, but it's always good to find a podcast that's outside of the Bachelor world. When they ask the Bachelor questions, you get to see their response. Even if Katie gives a response that we already know, like say she talks about the fantasy suite, it's still good to, and fun to see a bunch of guys that don't really watch the show comment on how it all goes down. So I'm going to play a few clips of what Katie has to say about the fantasy suite and her comedy world and what's going on here. And like I said before, you know, there's two types of videos online. There's information and then there's entertainment. And when you can give information while be entertaining, you've unlocked the secrets. And let's see if we do that right here. Uh, if you guys want to check out the full thing, which I fully recommend, it just dropped on YouTube like an hour ago. Go to Scissor Bros. Uh, subscribe right there. All right, let's take a look at what she has to say. Chlorette. Yeah. How did you get into, like, did you have to audition for that, or how does that work? So first, you're on The Bachelor. So I was 30, one of 30 girls mm -hmm. going after one guy. Mm -hmm. How great is this set, by the way? So they're like, do you want to try again? But this time, you get 30 guys. Were you super, I mean, obviously... Like, I'm a competitive person, mm -hmm. um, but were you, like, how, like, realistically, how bummed were you when it didn't work out on the first, on The Bachelor? With Matt James. Uh, like, how much of it do you have to play into? I didn't go very far, so okay. it was kind of surprising that I was picked. I was, uh, like, 11th place, which is, mm -hmm. like, week six or something. I don't know. Yeah. You don't really get a lot of time. So, like, in terms of the real world, it yeah. felt very comparable to like, I had a great first date with this guy. I'd gotcha. like to keep seeing him. I didn't have enough time to be like, I'm falling in love with him. Mm -hmm. I'm ready to spend my life with him. So getting sent home was sad because you're like, oh, I wanted to keep exploring it, yeah, but yeah, not yeah. like heartbreak. Right. And but, is it, is it authentic, like authentic as far as the connections and stuff that you have with these? For me, it was. It was. Yeah, I, don't, I can't speak for everybody. Right. But I really wanted it to be like a very genuine experience. So yeah. I stayed open to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. But you don't really have time. Like you should, probably shouldn't do that. You probably should hone in on like two people only. That's it. You don't have time. Hone how, in. Yeah, how, <laughs> how many like hours would you say you actually were even talking to the guy? Like oh, on the Bachelor. so the guy that I, well, the guy I ended up getting engaged to, I probably spent a total, total of 24 hours over like six weeks. What? And a big chunk of that is the overnight date, which is like, you know, eight hours. What happened? <laughs> Can you go through that date like that? The yeah. overnight date? Yeah. We fucked. <laughs> oh, <laughs> kaboom! <laughs> <laughs> and uh, how, they said that she said I know that she I, heard her. I, I just heard, I heard her fantasy sweets yeah. guys um, <laughs> and did he make the first move um, I actually don't remember because it's it's a little awkward no it's it's a great question yeah. because yeah. it's the first time you don't have a, a mic on the cameras are gone the producers are gone You. this is the first time you're by yourself with this person in like a locked bedroom basically and you also are seeing what could end up being the more realistic side of them because yeah. they're not playing the camera. Oh, they're yeah. not hamming it up a no little No one's bit. helping them with the conversation yeah. or like interrupting when it's going south. Mm -hmm. I just remember we drank, like it took a while before we like, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's just really, it's a very weird experience. No, sure. did you, did he, was there like, um, like jazz music in the background. There was a fireplace in the room. They gave us as whatever we wanted. We had all this dessert, wine, alcohol. So it we was watched a, Animal Planet. So, so it was romantic. He, so did he put a ramen noodles in the microwave <laughs> for you, or <laughs> keep going? Did he wrap your feet? Keep I'm going, just like going. I'm trying to get inside the yeah, mind yeah, of Steve right yeah. now, like what he's imagining on the set of The Bachelor. Yeah, whatever so you, you want, they give you. you. Want. So oh. if I was like, I need sex toys, they would have given that to me. Really? Whatever I want. Wow. They want it to be a great. That would be crazy suite. if yeah. you pegged him on. Yeah, that's <laughs> your first interaction. Yeah. Like the doors are all closed yeah. and everything. What did you ask for? Candles and just, I'm a I'm a basic girl, so like I just needed a little bit of wine. What kind of dessert. wine? Oh, red. I don't know. Just red, regular wine. Just red. Yeah. Was he drinking wine with you? Yeah. Can we can we uh, make what? up a song about? Yeah, go a ahead, basic man. girl. Yeah, yeah she go says ahead. She's a basic girl. I think. No, that we I've can... taken the test. I'm vanilla. Nothing wrong with vanilla. 
So here we get to the comedic stylings of the piano improv. If you're just listening only, the YouTube version, the editing, the, the hey, hey, dramatic hey, hey, stylings. Hey, 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 hey. I'm not a bad bitch. I'm basic. I like my milk with vanilla. If I'm watching a movie, I hope it's not a thriller. Cause I'm basic. No, you'll, you'll, you'll come in on this next part, oh. Katie. I'm basic. I don't want to do anything crazy because I'm basic. <laughs> don't stick anything in my butt because I'm basic. <laughs> Just let me lay down because I'm basic. <laughs> I'm basic. <laughs> this is a shout out to all you basic queens out there. Because listen. You don't have to pretend to be something you're not. Sometimes you just want a good foot rub and good missionary on your back. Sometimes you just want to get in bed and watch a nice show at the end of the night. You don't need all these fancy fireworks and proposals in the sky written in clouds. You just need someone to connect with. Shout out to the basic queens of the world right now. Very beautiful. Basic. Basic. Yay! Yeah. I mean, it's like how do you how do you compete with this? You know what I mean? This is good. This is good stuff right here. <laughs> exactly. Now, what was that guy's name in the um with the drink and the wine? Blake. That was that was Blake. Yeah, the fantasy suite was Blake. Okay, so can I give you a hypothetical? Oh yeah. What if it was perfect, and then when it got to the um the the intimacy part. You you, you kind of start feeling down there, and there was a pebble. Oh, they're gonna see his shitty breath. Um, no, nope. small dick. Like ext- like micro. Look, micro. If he knows what he's doing, whether with his hands, his mouth, his micro, then that's okay. All right, so Katie doesn't pass on the, or Katie passes on the chance to body shame there. The uh, the micro community is rejoicing. All right, let's switch to the eight, uh, 28 minute mark. She talks about stand up comedy. Headed to go do her dream, and she was probably going to kill it that night. It's probably going to be the best. <laughs> You'll set never ever. know because she's. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I could have lied, but I was like, nope, this, I got to yep, go. Gotta... So she talks about her first stand up experience when she got to open for Whitney Cummings in a giant theater. Come in. Um, so I went. It was horrible like now knowing what i know now it was horrible but at, at the time i i loved it D- doing a little 10 minute no experience stand up yeah. you did 10 minutes first uh, time honestly it was probably like six or eight i was by the time it happened i was so drunk because we were like an hour behind right right so i was trying to like time it right but we were running yeah. late so by the time i was there i was like i shit myself at work this one time like it was just a hot mess hot yeah. mess yeah. Do you remember what you were talking about that first Mostly time? Mostly shitting myself one time at work, um, the traffic the here in LA, um, dating, like dumb stuff, dumb stuff. We love that stuff. But it was just, it was chaos. But I did it. Yeah. yeah. And then um, finally started doing um, open mics here. And after doing an open mic, this girl came up to me. She's like, hey, I'm actually producing a show. Do you want to do a 10 minute set? I didn't even have 10 minutes. But I was yeah. like, okay. Yeah, yeah. So I had a month to just figure it out sure mm-hmm. um did it loved it and then of course people were like do you want to produce your own show and i was like i only have 10 minutes but i yeah. will figure it out so i did i produced two different shows and did kind of like um one was like a competition back mm-hmm. in seattle at the chacoma comedy club oh cool yeah um so even though i only had 10 minutes all the other comics got to do like a little contest yeah yeah and then we did one here in san diego that was just like you know opener feature headliner q a mm-hmm. at the end nice um so yeah, that's that's well, the weird. Well, what's kind of interesting to me is um, a lot of times when people get like some attention with a show, specifically like reality shows or or uh, like with TikTok or whatever, I'm not seeing them go to open mics. Which that was what impressed me about you posting about it is 
you you made a post about your night of open mics around San Diego that you're hitting. Yeah. And I feel like that's really rare to if you get some like a lot of love online to go do the really hard part of stand up, which is the open mic stuff. Yeah. It's like doing the work because it's easy to get booked on shows totally. when you have like a credit or some attention on you or some heat yeah. on you. It's easy to get spots because people want to have you out. They know that people yeah. will come out to see you. But I saw a video that you posted where mid open mic set, you got recognized. Hey. All right, so we'll play that video for you right now. Well, like, I'm somebody's leftovers as well. I was engaged once, so I shouldn't be judging so harshly. Uh, I did get dumped, though. You know what they say? But, oh, she's whispering. That's not sure. That I saying? just realized who you were. <laughs> I hate being recognized. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's well, like, let's just clear that air really quick. I was about to write. I gave 30 guys. I didn't work out. So, yeah, like, you say, boom. Okay. Anyway. Well, like, Good response there. Back to the show. Yeah. Um, and to me, that in in some ways, I think can be more difficult than bombing in obscurity. Does that make sense? Oh, totally. I yeah. mean, it, and that's the hard part is like, you have people wanting you on a show, but you're inexperienced, but you want the opportunity, but you got to put in the work, but then you yeah. don't want to be recognized because you have, you know, 700,000 people online saying that joke was ass. You know, it's like, I know. And that is true. Yeah. The idea where you could bomb in obscurity and work on your craft. I mean, who, who, who would show an audience their first year of learning the piano? You know what I mean? But that's what you got to do in stand up. So good for Katie Thurston for doing that. And I think it's great. She's venturing into some of these comedy podcasts. And, uh, and again, no offense to the bachelor podcast. I just think most bachelor produced podcasts by the alumni don't have that fastball that some of these comedy folks have, uh, that can, uh, you know, find the funny. And I don't know, that's just me. That's my, uh, that's my, um, you know, perception of it all. But let me know what you guys think. Follow me on Instagram at Neils. I've got stand-up shows coming up in Nashville, New York City. I'll be in Seattle and I'm working on a show in the Phoenix, Arizona area. So going to have a lot on the docket for you guys. Follow me on Instagram to get that info. I'll be on Patreon early uh, around the 10 a.m. hour today, patreon.com slash Dave Neal. And every afternoon, Bachelor Rush Hour, the hit podcast is free. You can go check that out. We'll have some fun, unique content over there. I'll actually be sharing some financial information about how the podcast is doing the different revenue streams if you like the behind the scenes of everything i'll be i'll be sharing that on the podcast today bachelor rush hour all right we'll be back right after this